Hi, my name is Eamon Carey. I'm one of the directors of Urban, and this is a new a quasi-regular show that uh, we're going to be doing here on YouTube and uh, promoting through our blog and so on as well, just about interesting things that strike us uh, about the world of technology and the world that we're working in. Um, so I've rather shamelessly started on our uh, own website uh, so that you know where to go if you want to find out more about us. Um, this week is the week of Mobile World Congress over in Barcelona, and the big story that's been dominating everyone's headlines is uh, Mokia, Microkia, Nocosoft, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's the uh, deal which will see Nokia using uh, Microsoft Windows Phone software on their mobile devices in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, more on that a little bit later. The big news, I guess, uh, this week, and one of the things that a lot of people were asking Stephen Elop about, who's, who's Nokia's CEO, uh, was this conflict of interests. He's one of the largest, eighth largest shareholder in Microsoft, um, will have options to buy Nokia shares at some point in the not too distant uh, future and there are some people suggesting that perhaps there was a little bit of a conflict of interest in Nokia and Elop selecting uh, Microsoft Windows Phone over say Google Android who also said that they were in talks with Nokia about potentially uh, developing phones and phone software together. Uh, Elop maintains there's no uh, conflict of interest even though he still owns a huge amount of shares um, and I suspect it would not be the worst time in the world to be buying uh, Nokia shares at the moment, considering they've gone down 20% uh, on the Helsinki Stock Exchange. Although, uh, also, I don't think Microsoft shares necessarily bounced up massively uh, with news of this merger. What we did see this week were some concepts for these new Windows Phone 7 devices. So, as you can see here, relatively standard-looking Nokia devices, it, it, it must be said, um, and the, the kind of distinctive Windows Phone 7 software running in the background. Now, the interesting thing about Windows Phone 7 is this news, that we're not actually going to see a device running Windows Phone uh, until after October. And one of the issues is, and you can see uh, Elop and, and Balmer here in a rather pointed uh, photograph, um, is that they're not actually going to run Windows Phone 7 on any Nokia devices. It's going to be this uh, Mango operating system, which is kind of halfway between Windows Phone 7 and uh, Windows Phone 8. So that means that it's, we're unlikely to see one of these phones coming out uh, before October of this year and probably more likely even a, a little bit later into next year. Uh, some of the other big news that, that happened at Mobile World Congress this week was this obsession with Facebook phones and I don't think it's it's going to go anywhere. Um, HTC, INQ, a bunch of other people are, are looking at developing Facebook phones and every so often lazy journalism equates this with Facebook actually developing their own hardware rather than what's actually happening which is HTC and INQ who are hardware makers taking some uh, the Facebook social graph putting it onto their phone and rather interestingly putting a Facebook button onto the phone which you can see here uh, and here which obviously allows for deeper integration of Facebook it allows you for one touch click to get to your Facebook page and Facebook information which is um, something that, that I had discussions with device manufacturers about back in the early days of mobile TV, which a lot of people talked about as being, you know, this uh, medium with huge potential that we could get people on the buses watching TV and so on. Uh, the problem with, if people remember Nokia phones at the time, was that you had to click through dozens of buttons almost to get to one piece of content. Um, I was always saying if they just had a TV button on the phone, it would have made things uh, a little bit easier. So it seems like Facebook have uh, have gotten that so who knows maybe mobile tv will be uh, will be next uh, this ongoing speculation that it will one day launch its own branded facebook phone i uh, find unbelievably um unlikely and you can uh, quote me on that one um other big news this week um in mashable and, and tons of other places uh, apple have launched their in-app subscription policies um and a lot of people are, are very very unhappy about that. Uh, similar to what happens if you generate revenue from selling an app in the App Store, Apple will take a 30% revenue cut for in-app subscriptions and uh, and sign-ups. So a lot of people very, very unhappy about that. Um, people suggesting that Apple are holding publishers ransom. Uh, Rhapsody, the uh, music service, uh, suggesting that the plan is economically untenable, uh, which is true if you're giving away 30% of your revenue to Apple and obviously a large chunk of the rest of your revenue to uh, music labels and artists and so on. Um, they've put out a, a statement, Rhapsody President John Irwin, saying that uh, an arrangement that requires them to pay 30% of their revenue in addition to content fees uh, means that they will be not able to offer their service through the iTunes store. Uh, and here's the stark reality. It's a 30% monthly fee to sell things through iTunes versus 2.5% if you're selling something through a credit card. Um, 
possibility of litigation at some point, uh, anti-competitive behavior potentially here by, by Apple. On Hacker News, there's very interesting uh, dissection of what Apple are actually doing. Um, and, you know, th the truth is, as they say here, brutally straightforward and honest. You know, Apple aren't necessarily interested in having Kindle or Netflix or Pandora or anyone else. Um, I suspect, and this guy is right, G.H. Shepard, that they're going to get rid of them. So what's going to replace them? Well, if you want to buy music, movies, or TV shows, you're going to buy it through iTunes. If you want to buy books, you're going to uh, buy them through iBooks. Uh, Apple get their 30% because they're going to be the platform providing the content. Um, and I think that's that's going to form the basis of probably quite a few um, lawsuits before too long. Uh, moving on, Facebook applications. Uh, this is an interesting one that, that Flip Video have put out. Uh, I'll be interested to see how long it actually lasts. Uh, but the idea is that you get rid of your profile picture here and you actually get a profile video. So let's take a look at the uh, video that they So uh, we'll have to wait and see how that how that actually works, um, or if it works. I mean, Facebook have been fairly uh, clear about not letting people clutter up their profile page or make changes to the kind of layout and design that, that Facebook have imposed upon profile pages. So I can't imagine putting in profile videos is something they'll be happy with. But it'll be interesting to see exactly how this works. I need to uh, upload a bit of video later on and see if uh, see if people actually see a profile video when they click on my page or if it's only me that. Uh, that sees it. Uh, another app that maybe could have been uh, put out for Valentine's Day, given the week that's in it. Uh, this is very funny, just from uh, Boing Boing, uh, an irritation checklist for marital bliss. And this is how you rate your husband or your uh, or your wife. Uh, well worth having a look at, but you can uh, get demerits for you know, reading newspapers at the table, which I guess nowadays will be reading your iPhone or Android at the table. Uh, you get plus points for helping people with the dishes and being polite and mannerly, uh, having a date with your wife at least once a week, being a good conversationalist, however, uh, minus marks for leaving shoes in the living room and so on, criticizing your wife in uh, public and praising your bachelor days, regretting having married, is probably not the best way to go. Um, demerits for the uh, women, uh, again, will, will give people a, a lot of laughs. Um, failing to sew on buttons or darn socks regularly wearing soiled or rugged uh, rugged ragged dresses and aprons uh, around the house and uh, seams in your pantyhose often crooked uh, you're definitely getting demerit points uh, for that one so if you're a Facebook app developer I suspect if you put something like this out for next uh, Valentine's Day you might yeah, end up getting a little bit of a viral hit. Uh, elsewhere in the technology world this week, 1000memories.com received about two and a half million dollars in, in funding from Greylock Partners and a whole bunch of, of kind of A-level um, investors, angel investors, people like uh, the guys who founded uh, Gmail, the people, Katerina Fake, who's involved in uh, Flickr and a whole bunch of others. So this is quite, quite an interesting idea. Um, one of the big issues that, that people talk about in terms of social media and in terms of the digital world is how you remember people uh, who've passed away and if you uh, have been in the unfortunate enough situation to have a friend or family member who's passed away who has a Facebook profile there is frequently a great outpouring of, of grief on those pages so let's take a look at, at what the guys from 1000 Memories are doing when you think about it the obituary is a bit outdated it used to be the best way to inform a community of the death of someone who was known and loved but it never really told a story and we don't always get our news from the paper anymore. Not that it doesn't still have its uses. Plus, we all live in different places. Dad's in Phoenix, Aunt Sally's in Boston, and Cousin Seth is... Where is Cousin Seth? We need a new way to remember the ones we love, together. Enter 1000 Memories. Just tell us the name of someone you want to remember, and we'll help you build a space to share stories, photos, and memories with family and friends. Everyone knows a person in a different way. By bringing them together on 1000 Memories, we can create a fuller, more vivid portrait of a life. 
It's free to use and saved forever for generations to come. Everyone has someone to remember. Let your memories live here. So it just goes to show you there the, the value of a, of a really well put together video to showcase uh, what you do. A uh, really good idea as well. Uh, I suspect something that, that will be uh, extremely popular over the uh, over the next few years. Um, as someone from Ireland, one of the most popular slots on the radio, one of which you know they could charge the largest amount of money for advertising around, were the death notices on local radio for years. Um, and this is a you know big big industry and a big part of the world, uh, unless, of course, you've bought this month's Time magazine or this week's Time magazine, uh, who suggests that within the next uh, 34 years, we could con conceivably uh, become immortal with this nice uh, Matrix-style graphic here. Uh, worth taking a look on time.com and reading the article about it. It's all about this idea um, that Ray Kurzweil has put out about the singularity and that we'll be able to transplant our consciousness and memories into a computer and we'll kind of walk around in, in various different types of cyborgs or there's uh, various different enzymes that can they've tested on rats that make them actually you know get younger and so on uh, interesting so if that works uh, perhaps 1000 memories won't work uh, as well uh, another story just uh, before we finish up uh, related to one of the parts of the world in which Urban does business uh, from arabianbusiness.com where companies in the Gulf region waking up to the social media uh, revolution and increasingly recognizing the value of social media and its ability to communicate with audiences. Um, it is something that we're starting to see a little bit of. Um, sometimes it's done very well, sometimes it's done uh, very badly. That's frequently companies and agencies and different people um, maybe not communicating very well. Uh, one company that's doing it extremely badly is Benny Hanna, uh, which is a teppanyaki restaurant a chain of franchises. They've got them in, in 16 or 17 different countries. Um, Benny Hanna recently opened in Kuwait. Um, a popular blogger went along there, uh, gave the place a you know reasonable review, not not great, uh, not scathing. Um, Benny Hanna sent him a bizarre message in the comments of his blog and, and are now suing him. Uh, so if you look up the hashtag Benny Hanna KW, uh, KUW on uh, Twitter, you'll find a whole bunch of information about that and links to uh, bloggers who've reposted uh, the original um, blog and information about what's happening and why they're suing them, um, but this is a lesson in uh, how not to do it in terms of, uh, of social media, something that could have very easily been uh, solved by simply just going on and uh, talking to uh, the blogger in question, maybe inviting them back uh, for a free meal or behind the scenes tour or asking them to do some videos and uh, you know explain what they do at Benny Hanna and that it was a new restaurant and so on. So this has been a bit of a disaster. And it'll be interesting to see if it impacts on the parent company because it's got a huge amount of coverage and Fast Company and Boing Boing and, and places like that. Um, and finally, before we go, uh, for the week that's in it uh, again, everyone was talking about Wayne Rooney's uh, amazing goal against Manchester City. Uh, I counter that with Rory Delap. It's not how to really player. strike a volley. was delivered from an unexpected source. Rory Delap's first in two years, and one that looks superb from any angle. Yeah, so pretty impressive. So that's all we've got time for uh, this week. Um, I'll try and, and come back and, and do this a little bit more regularly in the interim. If you want to find out any more, do feel free to go to urbantravel.com, check out our blog, uh, find out how to contact us uh, and what we do. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them in the YouTube comments section uh, or find me on Twitter. Uh, we're Urban Media on Twitter or uh, Eamon Carey. Not too hard to find. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Talk to you again very soon.